Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to really, it just came to me this video. My friend Willow, who you will know from these beautiful pictures that I did the makeup on her, which I can't believe I did it, it's so pretty. She was talking to me today about foundation. When we were getting ready to do those looks, I was asking her what her skin type was, you know, what her concerns were, and we talked a lot about dry skin, which is exactly where I live. So I'm going to talk about my dry skin favorites for foundations and primers, and how I use them in conjunction, um, the coverage, like just like everything, a deep dive, like old school YouTube, because it is important to get that kind of information. And when I was looking for foundations, you know, in 2000, like 14 to 16, I came to YouTube first. So let us do that. I'm gonna start off with primers. I do not like silicone primers at all. I don't think they do anything for dry skin except for dry me out and pill me up. So I tend to go for a hydrating, 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 hydrating primer or a glowy primer. The most hydrating primer in my collection is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I know this is $68, but let me tell you, it is actually worth every single penny. I got this first half off on an Ulta 21 Days of Beauty because I heard a lot of people speaking about it and it lives up to the hype. It smells <laughs> like pine salt, which is a very comforting smell to me. It is this kind of whipped texture. You pull it out and it's kind of thick. But when you apply it to the back of your hand or your skin, it just like melts into the skin. You can feel the instant rush of hydration. It is not only a primer, but a moisturizer as well. There will be some days I forget to put on a moisturizer and this works two in one. It really just like penetrates the skin really deep and gets that beautiful moisture in there. It leaves a little bit of a sheen on the hand. It's really stellar. I also feel this primer, um, because it is hydrating the skin, you can use a foundation on top at least if you're like super dry like I am, that is a little bit more on the dry side. It is forgiving and it just feels a little tacky, which is great. So it does, it's an all in one. It's $68, but it's worth every penny. I use this all the time. It's probably my most used primer just because um, I have it on today. I mean, it just helps really hydrate the face even though I set this with powder and setting spray. Then we go into the glowy slash hydrating <laughs> primers. Next, I have the Say Glowy Super Gel. This I feel like is a mixture between a moisturizing primer and a glowy primer. This comes out in like a little whipped formula and you just rub it out in the back of the hand and you can see immediately the sheen it gives. But I find with this primer, it doesn't take away from the hydration. When I worked with Willow, because I wanted her to be incredibly shiny, she wanted like ethereal. This is the kind of vibe I get from this primer. Like you see how this like, it's a glow from within kind of primer. It does smell floral. Oh, I didn't realize that was the smell I was smelling until right now. It does have a strong floral smell, so just know that if you are sensitive to smells. But this also works really well under the skin. It is hydrating as well as glowy. So if you want something that does both, that is great. It's not necessarily tacky. I don't think it'll make makeup last longer. But just like the Bobbi Brown primer, I do feel like because it is hydrating and a little bit glowy, it is more forgiving. If there's a foundation that you like that's a bit more on the matte side, it will give it some radiance. It will keep your skin hydrated um, and it won't make your skin look dry or dull throughout the day. I count this one as a primer even though it's technically not. This is the Glowless from Auric. I have the shade Morganite. It's in this beautiful bottle. It's also O formula, so it is more orange. This comes out like so, and then it is very, 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 very glowy. It's not super hydrating. This one is just for glow. It does have a bit of pigment to it. I know the new Morganite is way more neutral toned, so some people I know wear this straight up as like a foundation which I personally wouldn't be able to do because it's just a little too bright for me. But underneath foundation, it looks stellar. With this one though, because it's not as moisturizing, because it's technically like a illuminator, it's not a primer, you do have to use a more luminous or hydrating foundation or BB cream with it because I don't think it gives the skin that life. So just a word to the wise, it's gorgeous though, look at this. And I sometimes also use it as a highlighter just because it's so beautiful, but a little bit goes a super, super long way. And it has become a primer for me that I really love. The last one I have, I got at Sephora and I don't use this super often. I also do not support this brand, but I'm not gonna throw away a product and not use it. I think it's wasteful. This is from Rare Beauty and this is the Always an Optimist Primer. This is a pore diffusing primer. And I thought this would be silicone-y and I thought this wouldn't be hydrating. And I feel like I'm wrong on both fronts. It reminds me of the Touch and Soul Icy Sherbet Primer in the same consistency. It is on this like thicker side and when you blend it out, 
it feels, you know, it has that like feeling of it's covering pores. It doesn't feel though like the silicone primers that I've tried, nor does it pill up on my skin like most silicone primers do. It is a really nice primer. It is not though tacky. There's no tackiness to this. So it will not make your makeup last longer throughout the day or stick down better on your skin. It is simply going to diffuse the pores and make you look more airbrushed. So if I were to recommend a primer, it would be the Touch and Soul Icy Sherbet Primer, which I think is a better alternative to the Rare Beauty one. I just had to recently get rid of mine because it finally expired, but it is cooling, it is hydrating, and it is pore filling. It's like a genius product. I love that primer and I was really sad to see it go. Now we go into the realm of foundations. I have five foundations. Foundations and concealers are something I cannot stop buying and I just don't know why. We'll start with the one I have on my face right now. This is from Fenty Beauty and this is the Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. What I really love about this foundation is it does, all of my foundations do this, so I'm gonna say this over and over again, but what I love about this foundation is it really like lets my skin shine through. It is a buildable coverage. I would say it's a medium to buildable coverage and I built it up a little bit on here and it doesn't look cakey. It doesn't like move and slip around. Again, that also helps with the primer you have. I think it genuinely looks beautiful on the skin. The one thing I will say about this product is it does sometimes settle into my smile lines. I have a huge smile line, so it's just a thing that's going to happen with me. But it is one of those foundations, I think, that looks better the longer you wear it. Like once it like warms up with your skin, it really looks beautiful. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this. I also gave this to Elise to try and she loved it. She has incredibly dry skin, but her skin's also sensitive. The perk of having a skin tint is that it is lighter, um, it is more hydrating, and it's thinner. It doesn't cake up, it keeps the skin hydrated and it just looks fresh like your skin all day long. The next one I have, I'll go to my other skin tint. This is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint. I have the shade Fair 2, and I have to say, y'all, I love this stuff. <laughs> this might be my most skin-like foundation that I own, and it is because it is a skin tint and like tint. This is a light coverage. I think it is buildable. You can only build it to maybe in between light and medium, but it is the perfect skin-loving foundation. It feels more like skincare, especially when I use it in conjunction with the Vitamin Enriched Face Base. It feels more like skincare. My skin looks plump, it looks supple. It doesn't settle into pores or fine lines because it is so thin. It's beautiful. I have not though worn this for a long amount of time. I don't really wear makeup outside like that, especially if I'm testing out a new foundation because I still like to mask in public transit situations. So I cannot speak for the longevity of this makeup, but I can speak for how skin-like it looks. It, it's a skin-loving product. It's really beautiful. Again, this is light coverage. This is incredibly hydrating. It looks stunning. And this has SPF. Moving on to a skin tint. I think it's called like a Tinted Glow Hydrator. This has been one of my favorite foundations for the last two years. My old foundation was expired. This was on 21 Days of Beauty and I decided to pick it up again. So that really speaks for how much I love this foundation. This is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Foundation. I have the shade Fair 20. Oh my goodness, is this stuff good. This is definitely hydrating. Like it is marketed as a tinted glow hydrator and it's definitely that. If you use it in conjunction with like a glowy primer or like a hydrating primer, you will look dewy but like a healthy dewy like you've been out for a walk and it's like 70 degrees dewy like you know like healthy it looks so healthy on the skin this is way more high coverage than the bobby brown one this is i would say a medium coverage off the bat um, but similar to the last two foundations, this really enhances the skin. I don't feel like I'm wearing a mask when I wear this. This is a foundation that I reach for again and again and again. Again, I can't speak for the longevity of this product. I have not worn it for more than like two to three hours at a time. And the one thing I will say for this product is because it is so hydrating, I do find it settles into my fine lines, which is normal because again, like, I'm just a person and if something's settling into my smile lines, it means that I'm smiling that's beautiful. And then I have my two highest coverage foundations or that I can build to my highest coverage foundation. I'm gonna start first with the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm in the shade one. This shit is like incredible. I've applied it two different ways <laughs> and I've learned the correct way to apply it. So there is this little spatula, oops. There is this little spatula and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to scrape off a little bit put it onto a pan and then kind of like buff a kabuki brush into it and then apply it to the face. 
This is probably my, mm, I would say my least hydrating foundation. It's not marketed to be super hydrating, um, but it is marketed to like make your skin look yummy. And it really does. It is, it is, you can make it full coverage. Like you can build on this, you can make it full coverage, but you can also thin it out. And that's how I like to use it. I like to really kind of work it into the skin. I also like to use it in conjunction with a glowy primer because I just think that enhances it the most for me being a dry skin girl. It looks so beautiful. It also does wear really well. I've worn this foundation for six hours. So longer than my other foundations, because again, like I just wear it around the house. Um, or if I'm going to see like a friend to grab a drink nearby, like if I'm not using public transit, it looks stellar. It looks beautiful. Danessa Myricks, her face products are like out of this world phenomenal. So if you have a chance to pick that one up to try for yourself, definitely do. And then finally, this is the foundation I used on Willow and the foundation I recommended for Willow as well. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in the shade Mont Blanc L2, which I'm just gonna say on Ulta, this is a fair shade, but when you get the bottle, it's a light shade. So it is a little dark for me in the winter, um, but when I go outside and like exist in the world in the summer, like I can use it as a summer shade for me. This stuff, it is, mm, NARS foundations are something really special. I also had the Radiant Longwear Foundation and I think that one's beautiful. This one's a bit more hydrating than that. And what I love most about this foundation is it looks great when you first apply it. This is a medium to full coverage foundation. You can build it up. Um, it is marketed to be like healthy looking and it totally is. I love using it with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Base. I actually told Willow she should get this combo of products for her skin because again as a dry skin girly and someone who wants to wear foundation for a long amount of time this is it i've worn this for up to 10 hours i wore this when i went to sephoria it looks beautiful in photographs and it's one of those foundations that looks better almost the longer you wear it the more it like connects with your natural oils in your face this one does not really at all settle into my smile lines which is kind of crazy it's really 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 a beautiful beautiful foundation it is the most satin i would say finished out of all my foundations most of them are just dewy this one is way more satin that's why i like to use either a really really hydrating primer or a primer that has a bit more shimmer and shine to it so i will use an auric primer with this just to give it a little bit more of a healthy glow but truly stunning looks stunning in pictures looks stunning for eight hours um it doesn't really it does not break up on the face it doesn't do any of that it works so well with all of my other products i will always get a flawless base when I'm using this foundation. So this is a foundation that I will usually recommend to a lot more people because I think it fits how more people use makeup. If you're going to work and working eight hours a shift, <laughs> use this foundation. You know, if you're just like going out for a few hours, I would use another foundation personally for myself, but whenever I need it to stay for a long amount of time and look exactly the same, if not better than when I first applied it, it's this foundation. This is the one I keep coming back to. I do love this. I love all of my foundations, okay? That's why they're all here. But they all serve different purposes. This is my foundation I'll wear if I'm photographed because I just know it looks phenomenal in photographs. And like, again, coming back to Willow's photographs, it looked phenomenal. She was even talking about how, how good her skin looked after like, I think we sat here for six hours in the heat because my apartment was quite hot with three of us and lights and all of that. Um, so yeah, that's why I use this foundation. Okay. That was 18 minutes of me talking to you <laughs> about foundations and primers. I just recognized like when I was working with Willow, um, she doesn't really know much about makeup and she's been very open about that. And a lot of my friends, even my friend Kat, I did her makeup for. I love talking about makeup. I love makeup. It is a hobby. It's a passion. It's something that I just love it, sharing with other people. Um, so to have people ask <laughs> like, my opinions on things or my recommendations on things like really, really make me feel incredibly happy on the inside. I want to be a resource for people. I'm not a professional makeup artist, but I do know what works for my skin and my skin is dry skin, <laughs> very dry skin. So those are just the products that work for me. Um, let me know if you guys want to see a wear test or anything with any of these foundations. I can wear them for eight hours. Like I can, <laughs> I can suck it up and I can do it. Um, for you guys, just like old school YouTube. I saw someone on TikTok saying like, influencers aren't the same because like we used to get like swatches, we used to get like wear tests. And I recognize that myself, I used to do a lot of those like wear tests. I used to do 
swatches. I used to do like uh, reviews. I was a big review person. And I just feel like because I'm not getting new product, I can't review it because you know, like no one's gonna look for older products, but who says no? You know, these products have all been out for quite some time and I look for reviews on foundations that aren't new. Sometimes you don't want the newest, but you want the tritest and truest. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.